143 of the 8-Bit Geek. If, you, if you've never listened before, let me, let me tell you what you're in for, okay? 8-Bit Geek is a lot like... You know, you, you're looking around, you're like, fuck, man, I, who is this on here right now? This is this restart. Is boring. Restart. Why? You cut the, the whole fuck thing. Out. Cut the fuck out. No. What do you mean? I'm we going to do a remix. Like, it was completely, for like 10 seconds, you were like, hey, welcome to, and then all of a sudden Frozen. you're like, and then you're at a party. <laughs> So I'm going to restart this just for the just for the stream, <laughs> pretty much because they're okay. really recording. They Does really it? need it. Okay. All right. All right. <clears throat> Here we go. Mm-hmm. Should I just add the music later for the intro? No, fuck it. I'm going to do the intro over again. Oh, okay. of the 8-bit geek you know if you if you've never been here if this is your first time listening to the 8-bit geek let me tell you what it's like okay 8-bit geek is a lot like going to a house party with kevin spacey you know you go in and you're like man this party who put who put it on these three guys super fucking bored i'm just gonna i'm just gonna go upstairs real quick and watch some tv i guess just into this bedroom random bedroom you know, and after the party's over, we just come on upstairs. We jump in bed on top of you. I'm Jeremy. With me today are two men who were named most likely to be Kevin Spacey in their yearbooks. <laughs> Too fucking soon. <laughs> oh, it's so awkward. I am a Kevin. However, I am not <laughs> Kevin Spacey, nor was I named after Kevin Spacey. I want nothing to do with Kevin Spacey. At, yeah, and at no point is ever. God damn it. At no point has anyone ever compared me to Kevin Spacey in any regard. Mm. So that I am God grateful for. Damn it. Um, <laughs> oh. Oh. <laughs> so. dot org. <laughs> Oh man, what a clusterfuck all that is, huh? Yeah, <sighs> yeah. I figure, I figure, <laughs> just get it out of the way at the top of the show and well, deal with it, and then get onto the fun, right? Yeah, just mm-hmm. awkward as shit. I like, I think that's funny. Uh, I don't necessarily think what happened is funny. I think that's really fucked up. Um, mm-hmm. But, but it's a, it's a funny intro. I approved it. I approved it earlier. You did approve it. Actually, I was against it. I want to let the record state that I was like. Way the fuck against it. I even sent a no gif, guys. That <laughs> that means like one hundred percent against it. This is one hundred percent making fun of of Kevin Spacey, which I feel like we are a hundred percent allowed to do. Fuck him been, and fuck it's him. Been 40, well, 30, the First Amendment 40. says we can do that. Yes. <laughs> okay. It's been a so good. It's what, been a good thirty years, right? Uh, hey. Yeah. You know what? What he did uh, uh, to Anthony Rapp is fucked up. It's super <laughs> fucked up. In all accounts, not only, like, okay, he came out and was like, oh, I'm going to choose now to live as a gay man. Like, okay, but, like, he was 14, dude. Like, no one gives a shit, like, that if you're gay or not. We don't care. It's the fact that you, like, try to fuck a 14-year-old, you sick shit. Uh, I don't know. So that, you that's can't really... blame that on the 80s. No, I mean, <laughs> when he's like, oh, it was 31 years ago, and I was drunk, I guess. I don't remember. Like I don't know. That's not. That's not. Yeah. Who cares? You're 26. That's eight eight years difference, man. Ain't cool. Yeah. Have you ever been so blacked out drunk that you did shit that you didn't even remember? No. Yeah, but normally in in the in the home, like in my own home with no one else there, to where I woke up in the bathroom or something like that. I'm like, oh, cool. I found a way over here. I've only gotten like that once or twice in my life, and one time. My, my my then girlfriend was over at the apartment and mm-hmm. she said that I woke up in the middle of the night, walked over to the wall and peed. Th- I thought it was the toilet. I've never, I've never done it like that. 
I did black out at my own birthday party and my girlfriend took care of me. Like I remember holding onto my kitchen sink while I had a, like a house full of, or an apartment full of people. I was holding onto my kitchen sink thinking I was going to fall up. Mm-hmm. And then I woke up and I was 45 minutes late for work. So it was just like, that was it. But the girlfriend took care of me. So I've, I've, yeah. I've never been blackout drunk and I spent a lot of my twenties drinking. Um, I think that I think that's just called a functioning alcoholic, though. Yeah. So <laughs> there you go. Oh, be proud of it there. <laughs> uh, I, don't, I don't know. I've never had that issue. So like using that, to Are me using that uh, an excuse is, is garbage. Um, and it's it sucks it, I, 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 that he did something so stupid, so stupid because. I feel like it taints his work, which I think is like you can also see oh, be said about Harvey like Weinstein and stuff. Because it kind of like it sucks because like yeah, they can have this whole other side of them where it's like they could still be a great actor, a great producer, and all the stuff, and you can still admire their work. And but it's hard it's hard to separate their career from their personal life because they are celebrities and they live so much of their personal lives in the public. Now Kevin Spacey's been pretty good about being relatively private through private. Most of his career, but. Man, that sucks. Because like, you probably know, for like, reasons like this, I, who knows who else who didn't no, speak exactly. out? Exactly, and that's kind of the thing. It's like, man, I wonder who else is going to come forward about this. And I'm, I'd like just thankful that like Anthony Rapp is also, you know, he's had a great career. He's had, yeah, he's, he's done very well for himself, and so it's very. I mean, especially on Broadway, he was in the original production of Rent, Rent. Mm-hmm. and he was also in the movie of Rent. Yep, and now mm-hmm. he's on the new Star Trek and all that mm-hmm. stuff. So, ah, uh, oh man. Oh man, I guess, I guess they're. I guess they're still. Um, I guess he's still. They're going to push forward with the final season of. Um, yeah, and I have to imagine at this point, what you do is you kill Frank Underwood and you make it about Claire. I don't know what the fuck else you do. Well, they, well they, they, this is the last season. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and that's what they were trying to say. They were like, "Oh, well, we, this is going to be the last season before all of this came out." And I, I don't really buy that one. Oh no, they said this like last year, two years ago. There's only like two seasons left or a season left. Oh, really? they, yeah, they've announced it before that, that it was going to okay. wrap up soon. Um, but, but yeah, I mean, I can't imagine that uh, Robin Wright would want to work with him, <laughs> like after this stuff. I couldn't imagine anyone would want to work with him. That's really, what that's what I'm saying. You know, it kind of becomes like Roman Polanski, where it's like, yeah, you saw people that work with them, but then you know, a lot of people just don't anymore. They don't want to. <laughs> they want to have their name associated with them. It begs the question, like, how big does this go, though? Kind of like the whole the executive sexual harassment thing. Like, like how how deep does it go in Hollywood? How many, you know, it's it's it, there's probably fucking meetups and shit like this of all this. And mm-hmm. I mean, that's all you know speculation. But fuck, man, it's it always seems to go that route, right? Like the next thing that leaks out is like Kevin Spacey, a part of big child porn ring. Yeah, <laughs> well, right. the, the, it's all turning into Pizzagate all over again. Um, but it's fucking the thing that sucks about it in a lot of these situations is um like this actor has been telling this story since 1990 and no one really believed him or no one really acted on it and then all of a sudden what 27 years later they're finally like oh okay now we'll take you serious since all this other shit's happening and it's like there's other actors that have basically been blackballed from the industry for trying to expose this stuff and just now they're finally being believed even though they've been saying this shit since the 90s or yeah. even earlier than that, well, even yeah. the 80s. You can even go back. Like as little Corey as... Feldman's crazy ass. I was gonna say, like, Corey we Feldman. all think he's crazy. He could have been the fucking most sane guy out of us all. Yeah. Well, Ed brings up a good point too, is like uh, he just announced that he wants, okay, I think this part is makes him crazy. He's like, I need $10 million to out a Hollywood pedo ring. And it's like, because oh. he doesn't want to speak out unless he has security. And I'm like, okay, dude. Like, well, you can I... just... I mean, there's the part where that that I do understand. I mean, that you got to think like it's part of the whole reason why people don't speak out to begin with, as far as Hollywood's concerned, is that they're worried about their careers and stuff. Now you can say like Corey Feldman hasn't really had much of a career lately, anyways, and that Mm -hmm. is because he kind of has, in some regards, kind of he's weird. Let's be honest, he's gotten weird. All this aside, this whole like uh, his angels and stuff. Remember all that. Mm. And like we saw him at Alma City, and he looked like, he looked like he was cosplaying Michael Jackson. Like, yeah, I was bizarre. like, oh, that's cool, Michael Jackson cast. Yeah. Like, oh shit, like, oh, that's Corey, Corey Feldman. Yeah, <laughs> like I I don't blame him. Like, no, if I'm gonna do this, and I know I'm never gonna work again because of it, like I want to make sure that I, I do it. 
I'm gonna do it right. <laughs> I'm gonna get I'm gonna get paid to out all these people. But again, I mean, he was he was on like Oprah and he was on The View and he was on all these talk shows, like just saying about, about his experience, him and Corey uh, Corey Haim and stuff, and how like they had both been approached, and I think how Corey Haim was actually like sexually assaulted and stuff, and that's part of the reason yeah. why he probably committed suicide is because he was dealing with all these demons and stuff and whatnot or overdose. How did he die? It was suicide, right? It was an overdose. Yeah, it was a yeah. But like, but, I mean, it could have been, you know, been that all, right? Yeah, but that's why he was on drugs. I guess maybe that's what it was. Is that he was because he was, this, you know, internal conflict of all the shit that happened to them in the eighties. So I don't know, you know, and that's where people are just like, oh man, okay, calm down. But I don't know. You play a game like L.A. Noir, where again, I mentioned this last time we talked. I think we briefly talked about this. There's a whole mission in the game where some like fourteen year old girl has been raped or whatever, and you have to like go to Hollywood to try to figure out like you know and interview all these who people did who did it. And mm-hmm. it's well, that's like the, one of the first missions in the game is this whole like who murdered and raped this like fourteen year old actress or something, and it's just mm. like that. And that was in the nineteen forties where I guess you're just like okay, I guess that yeah that probably happened then. It doesn't happen anymore. I'm like well bullshit, it doesn't. <laughs> it's like inter- it's just, it's in that industry. You know? Yep. You know, Finn Finn Wolfhard, the the uh, from Stranger Things and It and stuff, like just fired his his agent who was also who's uh, just accused of sexually harassing uh, his child clients and stuff. And he was just like, "No, oh, fuck you, I'm out." Oh so, God, yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> uh, all right, let's move on from that. Let's get let's get into the funny. Let's uh, let's uh, let's have people, you know, let's get all the icky sticky off of us and yeah, let's do that by bringing Sean Pennison. <laughs> yeah, let's bring Sean. <laughs> oh, we still got to do the uh, the pimping ourselves out. Oh yeah, on. we got. Oh yeah, and we if have winners and stuff. Here, if this is your first time and you like what you hear, you can always <laughs> check us out on Audio Boom. They are our main sponsor. We thank them for that. They provide all of our bandwidth. Uh, you can also find us on Spotify, iTunes, Google Play, Stitcher Radio, and anywhere else that you can find a podcast. You can follow us on social media at the 8-Bit Geek. And, of course, every Monday night right here on Twitch. You can watch us live, interact with everyone else in the chat, and uh, go from there, I guess. (laughs) Uh, If you can't do our Monday night show, you can always hook up with us on Discord. Uh, We, you know, every day, a slew of new people are coming in. They're uh, They're getting acclimated with the community. Everyone is, like, as soon as somebody comes in, there's at least one person who's like, Hi, you know, like they're, just, they're high, high, or they're saying hello. They're just saying hi, you know. Oh, okay, because like, I was gonna say we got Ed pegged in, and to have to have that and just all that support from that one person. I'm just kidding. There's a ton. There's a ton of people <laughs> in there. They're chatting every day, and uh, you can get in on that. You can game with people, meet some new people. Come do it. Come hang out. Come hang out. We even get in there and play too. Come on. Uh, we also have other shows on our network other than this one. So if you enjoy this one, you may enjoy Eight Bit Saga. You can um, tune on, so, tune on. You can tune in on Divas, Dropkicks and Dives, Brainberry yeah. Talk, of course, Garbage Day. They're all there for your listening pleasure. Let us tickle your eardrums. You can also support us. We give away the show for free, no big deal. Uh, but if you want to come out of your pockets and you want to say, "Hey, those motherfuckers, they're doing stuff, and we're going to support that shit," then you <laughs> can give us a dollar, or you can give us a million dollars right over on Patreon. Uh, it helps uh, pay for everything that we're about to do. Uh, in the pre-show, uh, Doug let me know that um, uh, we're going to try to get a spot on the uh, My Brother, My Brother and Me um, podcast and add add spot on that. So um, your money goes towards that. It pays for that. It pays for these fancy microphones we're talking on to, pay mm-hmm. for the uh, for the boost that we get at the Comic Cons and um, all of our all of our cool stuff. So we appreciate you and we thank you for that. So. Um. Oh, and they just paid for for what we're about to announce as well. You guys helped with this, and and so we're giving away some free shit because Eight Bit Horror Fest is done. Isn't that right, Doug? Yeah, it's, uh, this is I guess technically our last episode of the month of October. This will be out on, yeah. on Halloween Day, which that also uh, reminds me. Um, if you haven't already bought one of our Eight Bit Horror Fest shirts. Today, Halloween Day, is the last day to order them. Mm-hmm. So make sure they're you go, so soft. Yeah, A-Bit, get the tri blend. Eight bit geek dot com to pick up that shirt, as well as shirts for all your other favorite eight bit geek shows. Um, 
But yeah, Ape at Horrorfest. We just released our review of Halloween with special guest Peter Kleins, who joined us again to talk about Halloween. It was a fun episode. Mm-hmm. Um, and if you we... don't know who Peter Kleins is, he is a famous author who wrote some of uh, the, maybe some of the books that you've never read before, but you should. Yeah, like X Heroes, his X Heroes series, which is kind of mm-hmm. like The Walking Dead meets The Avengers. Uh, which is a lot of fun. Um, and then he's also got 14, The Fold, and his newest book, Paradox Bound. Uh, you can go yes. pick all those up. They're all really they're all really good. They're a lot of fun. Amazing books. I've read them all. Doug's read them all. Yeah. Uh, well, you still have to read Paradox Bound. Yeah. Uh, Jer's gotten a couple chapters in. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. Um, <laughs> Real so proud no, of that. So it, he, he kicked off Horror Fest with us, with our interview with him mm-hmm. uh, in early October, and he's closing us out this month. So go listen to that review. Go listen to all the other reviews that we released and all the guest shows released like Nerd Foo, bri Fi Podcast, Movie Films with Bill and Steve, and We Talk Games, as well as uh, who else? Brainberry, 3D, Garbage Day, and Saga all contributed episodes as well. So go listen mm-hmm. to all that shit. So much content this month and so much good stuff. Um, That's right. Yeah. And we, we ran a contest uh, in the when it, this thing first started. We were going to give away um, some 8-bit uh, um, Horror Fest posters and then also evil within two the video game for your choice of uh, console or for um uh, pc and so we are here to announce the winners kevin uh you take it away man i want you to announce the winners okay all of them well, fuck yeah man awesome <laughs> so all the posts we have some posters that we're going away they're all like the same poster but we have one that's specially signed by the ape bit saga cast mm-hmm. yes Including me, because I was in one episode, so I made sure to sign that. <laughs> <laughs> you piece of shit, that wasn't for you! Actually, I, I asked first, and oh. then Jared's like, yeah, sign them all. So, I just wanted to get clarification. I had to get clarification, because I would have felt really bad if they were like, if you guys were like, we were not, you're not supposed to sign that one, yeah. bro. Uh, but, I don't care. So the first winner, and this is for the Saga poster, signed by all of the Saga members. Uh, this one goes out to... Brandon Rude. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we need to have that music on. Doug, cue it. <laughs> um, okay. That right, doesn't really and... help the podcast, though, you dumb idiot. You stupid piece of shit. I swear to God. Oh, my God. <laughs> All right. Well, I'm done giving away stuff. So that's our show. <laughs> do, do, do. No. Um, we're giving away three signed 8 bit horror fest posters for 2017. Uh, the first one is. Brett Duval, the mm-hmm. second one, Chase Gordon, mm-hmm. and the third one is Maria Ramos. So nice. you guys are all getting signed posters. Uh, so yeah, it's pretty awesome. And then finally, we're giving away Evil Within 2 for the system of your choice. And the winner for Evil Within 2 is Mark McAllister. Mark D. McAllister. Right. And his address is. No, just, <laughs> yeah. I just wanted to clear that. But yeah, I mean, thank you guys all. So, we had like so many entries for this. It was pretty amazing. And uh, just so many people listening to the reviews, uh, so many people giving great feedback on them, joining in, you know, loving our reviews, hating, hating the choices we made, especially for Phantasm, um, you know, and just everything. I think we had a great time this year, and this is, I mean, this this ape at horror fest. This is our third year going, and it gets better and better every year. Like it's just so much fun. It is, and uh, we'd like to announce as well that um, it's not over, because nope. um, in just a couple months, eight bit um, Xmas starts up. And uh, it's just a lot of fun over and over again. We're going to be reviewing some films from uh, for Christmas movies. Hopefully, uh, Kev watches one of them this year. At least oh, one. Oh, fuck up. One time. <laughs> one time. <laughs> and I still got the colors right on Home Alone. No, you didn't. No, you didn't. Yes, it was red and yellow. No, and it green. wasn't. Go back and listen to the episode. You'll find out. Okay. Yeah, and I'm going to find out you were wrong. Oh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Dumb idiot. Okay. All right. So <laughs> let's get into let's get into misconnections. Uh, it's where we have a lot of fun. A lot of people seem to like misconnections. I guess we'll keep it. But every week yeah. we take real ads from the misconnection section of Craigslist. We read them in funny voices. They are completely real. We don't edit them in any way. Although we do ad lib a little bit. But we definitely can't make this stuff up. Uh, 
a Sean, a penis. Oh, what's up, fellas? What's up, man? Oh, not much. What do you got for us this week? Uh, this one comes from uh, looks like Highway South 60 Center, male for women, in the middle of the road. I don't know. Our house in the, in middle, the of middle of the, the street. Yeah. Our, yeah. <clears throat> um, I attached a picture of it's not my penis this week. So. <laughs> it's a Dunkin' although, Donuts cup. It says, although it looks you. a lot. <laughs> it's a Dunkin' Donuts cup. I don't know how that looks like my dick. I don't know how you know it looks like my dick. Jerry gets around. He does. No, you have Dunkin' Donuts tattooed on it. You've showed us all. Oh, that's talking about my nuts. That right? is true. That's, that's, that's the that time you got blackout that's, drunk. That's, 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 it's not donuts. It's Dunkin' D's nuts. <laughs> God damn it. And it. Underneath that, it says Doug E. Dick. <laughs> uh, it says America runs on <laughs> Dunkin' D's nuts. I want that on a shirt now. <laughs> I really do. That's a big tattoo, man. Well, you know what they say. Oh, no. <laughs> you can't measure taint to tip. Who says? I sit on the couch with my wife and six children watching the news. <laughs> what? <laughs> what? You have that many kids? And Who needs horror shows or movies? <laughs> it's my it's one of my families around the US oh no local news can instill fear and heart palpitations I left my life behind chose a simple road and built my home there yet I longed for my past life my personality does not do simple we thirst for chaos catastrophe change of scenery wait say that again fast which part the chaos, right. catastrophe, and change of scenery. Oh, man. <laughs> I had to get away. Something told me to leave. I had to escape my perfection. I grabbed my keys and ran out the door, leaving my children and wife at the door crying. Oh, my God. <laughs> they know where I'm headed. It's inevitable. Oh, no. This is every week when he goes <laughs> does <laughs> this show. <laughs> <laughs> I get into my truck and I take one last look at the door to see my youngest daughter crying and holding the soft brown teddy bear I bought her this morning. Oh. His fur was becoming bathed in the salty, childish tears streaming onto him from human rain. Oh. This is sad. I leave and pull away to return to the busy neon litter trust highway of past days. I drive through the roads with trees towering on each side, high and tall, hiding the moonlight. I drive through the trench of simple life, heading towards the filth. Wait, this is like a novel. Where's the missed connection come in? <laughs> night turns to day. Day turns to day as the lights keep getting brighter. <laughs> Desolation marks the highway now. The warning to what this road leads to. No speed limit, only peril ahead. Dead Ugh. things now lay on each side of the road. This is Hunter S. Thompson? <laughs> I drive my car in the, simp in the middle of the highway and park it in the middle of sin. I throw away the keys never to leave this place again. <laughs> my perfect past tingles at my temple as... As a brain zap tells me I am somewhere I shouldn't be. Since pale purple painted nails show me the road. <laughs> Many roads here, but only I wish to travel in this place. I smile in pleasure just at her touch, knowing that is only the beginning of what her highway has to offer. I'm back. <laughs> Wait, what? Yours truly, Sean Pennis. <laughs> What? <laughs> we don't even have an age, a weight, a fucking <laughs> description. <laughs> Goddamn slam poetry over here. <laughs> that's just that's just me now. This is the new Sean Pennis. Are you wearing a turtleneck? Yeah, I am. And did you notice my <laughs> my small round sunglasses? <laughs> <laughs> Mm. Oh my god. That's right. 
that's the smooth beats you heard coming from this your boy here, Sean Fucking Dennis. Beat Nick. <laughs> oh man. Well, one second. <laughs> it's a little. It's a little cold in here. I think someone left the window open. Oh God, no! <laughs> hey, 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 hey. Hey, hey, Mark, hey. did you just hear my treatment for my new screenplay I just read? <laughs> it was his oh, monologue. I hit, no, shoot it at me again, okay? All right, here we go. From the shoot beginning. Shoot it at me. Marky Mark, 2017. I sit on the shoot couch it. with my wife and six children watching oh. the news. <laughs> <laughs> Who needs horror shows or movies? Is that I, I, it? I'll keep going <laughs> if you want. I'll read the whole thing again. <laughs> No, that's okay. I'll, I'll read it to you. I'll read it to you later. Okay, cool. You know, I'm always down to listen to your voice. Okay. <laughs> oh, n- that goes both ways, my friend. Oh, mm. sometimes I'm like in a bathtub with bubbles and stuff, mm-hmm. and like I got a little, like I got a little mocky mock toy, and he's like diving into the bubbles and stuff. Like, oh no, I gotta save the world again. And then all of a sudden he comes out, but in the background, I got misconnections going. <laughs> Okay. So, uh, all right. <laughs> yeah, good, that's good, the, cool story, yeah, bro. Yeah. That's the thing you do. That's neat. Hey, Kev, what's going on? You know, uh, it was great. It was How's great. Your mother? Um, she's doing all right. Thanks, Marky. How? How? Never mind. How? Never mind. Okay. Well, <laughs> here we go. Okay. Um, given the news this morning, seems a little weird, but I I put these notes together yesterday, so don't judge me. Okay. Uh, okay. Young girl with 70-year-old man at the Circle K. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Today <What>? in- <laughs> you saw <laughs> Kevin Spacey at a Circle K? Oh, no. <laughs> I was in Santa Ana. You know, I was driving and stuff. My body's fit. 6'1". You know, if I'm wearing the right shoes. Yeah, I'm single. Say. I'm 42. A little bit older than that. Anyone? Anyone? Yeah, anyone listening? <laughs> I got something to say. We we know. I was the tall white guy wearing the blue shirt, okay? I was standing next to my new products that I just released at the Soccer K. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> behind you in line, that's where I was, okay? Like, as the old short, you know, gray-haired grandpa was buying you cheap beer or something. <laughs> <laughs> I was trying not to laugh. I felt bad for you, okay? You look so like uncomfortable and stuff. I hope that I hope that is not like a sex thing. <laughs> but if so, you know, I hope I hope you make him bank off of them. L O L period. <laughs> Anyways, you were like nineteen to twenty two, Burnett, nice body, you know. Come get a real man, babe. <laughs> Winky face. I won't pay you, you know, but I only drink God a good beer, okay? Wait, what? So you won't pay her, but you only drink good beer. Yeah. So does she I'm have w- to pay you in good beer? Is that what's what's going on here? No, I'll provide the beer because I'm witch. You're you're witch. I'm you're witch a like witch. A- That's fitting. It's almost Halloween and all. Oh yeah. Oh. Hey, happy Halloween. <laughs> God damn it. Have, what, are you, what are you guys going to dress up as? Uh, Mark Wahlberg. Oh! And, and I'm going to go as the Funky Bunch. All of them. Oh! Uh, hey. I was, I was going to be your. Uh, I was going to. Uh, I was going to be your character from um, that one movie where you did the porn. Boogie Nights. Oh, I'm Boogie Will Nights. For that one. Sorry, I kept. I I wanted to call. <laughs> I wanted to call it Wookiee Nights because my brain has been infected with Ape Saga. <laughs> <laughs> That's cool. Hey, 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 Sean. Yeah, what's up, am, dude? I gonna, am I going to see you this weekend? Uh, uh, yes, maybe. Yes. Yes. Awesome. Maybe. I don't All know. Right. We'll see. Okay. Well, I got I to gotta go, okay? All right. I'll see you this weekend, maybe, probably. Okay. Peace out, uh, you, you guys. See you in the bathtub. Bye. <laughs> did, did he just say see you in the bathtub? Yeah, I don't fucking know. And the bathtub's not outside. That's that, 
it's a little chilly outside for a bath. I think it's because he was saying that he listens to uh, yeah. misconnections in the bathtub. Mm. Now, learn to okay. draw connections, Velvet. I'm just, you know, I'm just here, no, there. I just walked in during the last part of that. I just caught him out the window, and he said something about bathroom. So, <laughs> I don't know. He's Marky's a little weird these days. He's picking up on young girls again. Um, speaking it's of me, Hollywood though, thing. it's I guess it is a Hollywood thing. I mean, a lot of that's coming to light. So, see, I like to keep it. I like to keep it close to home. This one goes out to the pregnant beauty at Walmart because oh, we're yeah. going back to Walmart now. Real young. Now, this is a male for women. SGV, Sega Genesis video games, <laughs> is this little new system that they got that they, they re- reproduced it. You know, since they came out with like the SNES Classic, they got the Genesis Classic. Mm-hmm. So you know, I just want to say I was in the Sega Genesis video game section. <laughs> now this one's to the beautiful pregnant woman who followed me into Walmart Saturday afternoon. You followed me in, and I could not help but notice your big, beautiful round belly. Looks like you're about to pop. If you're interested, I got the wrong you're in there, but that sounds about right. I would totally rub down that belly of yours with cocoa butter. I feel like I've said this one before. Maybe I've seen a couple different pregnant beauties at Walmart, (laughs) but I feel like this might be a repeat. (laughs) Prove it. Either way, if you got a pregnant, beautiful round belly, I will totally rub that down with some cocoa butter. Maybe feel a kick. Maybe it's going to be a soccer player when he comes out. <laughs> Everybody's favorite love, Velvet Jones. Oh man, episode two thirty-seven. Yeah, see. How do you how do you not remember anything we talk about, but you remember every misconnection? <laughs> I mean, I, I remember <laughs> everything. I don't know about your boy Kevin. That's he's a forgetful motherfucker. He probably I don't know where he's at right now. That's so he went to the bathroom that was so soon too. That was only like a month ago. Yeah. So seven. No, that was a while back, right? A couple months. Two thirty seven was like six. It was weeks re- ago. somebody had to repost it. Like because everything that I the, everything that I pull off of Craigslist is always marked as red, and it's it's all like linked out and everything, and so. And this one was just posted today or yesterday when I put it up there. So, fuck, that sucks. I'm still looking for my pregnant beauty. That's why. So it's yeah, a yeah, repost. Yeah, you haven't found her. That's right. <laughs> right, right. So, there yeah. you go. I guess we'll see you next week <laughs> with the same post. <laughs> with the same post again. I hope your mom, so. your mom's conversation. In the chat, they say, "My man Velvet grabs so much ass, he traveled back in time." <laughs> <laughs> Velvet does that. He's really. Man. Well, why for him? Well, he you already left. He went out the window. You don't so. hear me like standing up for Sean. <laughs> well, Sean can get pretty skeezy, so I can see why you're not standing up for him. Hey, speak for yourself. I'm still here, asshole. Oh, shit. Sorry. Sorry, Sean. I thought you were out the window as well. No, in I, the bathtub I, with I like Marky. A, I, like a normal person, use the door. Thank you very much. <laughs> Oh my god! I almost went. I almost went saga. I, I went. I was about to go. Um, I peek my head through the window. <laughs> <laughs> Get uh, out of here, right. Mark! <laughs> hey guys, did someone call my name? Oh shit! No. Uh, all right. So this week in the box office, one big movie came out, which was Jigsaw. Uh, but I didn't it's even not- know this movie existed. Well, nobody else did either, because it only made sixteen point three million at the box office. Oof, that was uh, enough to take number one, though. It was. It, was uh, it took it away from Tyler Perry, who is sitting at number two. No, oh, but only yeah, still it's only made million. thirty million, though, like thirty-five. Yeah, but can I, we, let's be real. What's the budget on this on Tyler Perry? I know he's got like, all the outfits, right? The budget yeah. twenty-five million, so he's in the money. Oof, yeah, he's already in that the in the black. He gets to make, he gets to make uh, Tyler Perry's Boo Three. Oh man, you got to complete the trilogy at this point. That's when he gets the hockey mask. Yeah, <laughs> one can only hope. But let's talk about Jinx right. for a second. Like, I don't remember seeing a trailer. I don't remember seeing any advertisement for it. I saw a trailer for it. Do they have like? I mean, is this supposed to be a reboot or is this supposed to be a continuing no, continuation? Because like the trailer was like, he's been dead. He's he's dead. There's no way he's coming back. And then all of a sudden, you hear his voice, and he's like, <laughs> so it's the same actor. Yep. Mm-hmm. Huh. This one it says it says that it follows 
this this movie follows Saw Rebirth from 2005. Interesting. So well, I'm gonna have to go not, see that for three see bucks. It, which I guess local Saw trip. Rebirth 2005 is a short film, so I don't really know how that works. Because Saw Two came out in 2005, also. Yeah, I have no clue. But that's that's you know really what? strange, especially Keep considering it. a Saw movie. Those movies usually get hella, hella. I say. Hella advertising. Also, interesting enough, this is like the first Saw movie in like seven years. It doesn't mm-hmm. feel like it, but the last one came out in 2010. Yeah. Remember when those used to come out like every, every year. single yeah. year? 2004, yeah. 2005, 2006, 2007, 2008, 2009, 2010. Man, yeah. Interesting as well, Tobin Bell, who plays uh, Jigsaw. John, yeah. Also played Savitar in The Flash. Yeah, who's the voice? Yeah, and he's then, got a good voice. Yeah, that's why it was crazy because they've like, uh, what's his uh, Tony Todd did the voice of of uh, Zoom in season yeah. two, and so it's just like, damn, you got Candyman and Jigsaw. That's why I was like, man, I can't wait to see who the bad guy is this season. Oh, mm. or last <laughs> last se- or <clears throat> yeah, this season. this season it's just like mm, guy in a chair, guy in a chair, guy in a chair. Devoe, <laughs> I think his name is Bell Biv Devoe. Bell Biv Devoe. Yeah, he's secretly playing that every time he's in the chair. You just don't hear it. That's why the girl's so annoyed with him. Mm-hmm. Oh my god! Please turn this record off. Yeah, it's always on. It's re- not even poison either. It's like Doomy or like some like off Bell Biv Devoe song that exactly. like a B side. That girl is po. You know what? If they ever they have a poison <laughs> character, that better that song better be in the fucking episode. I swear to Christ. <laughs> poison, poison. <laughs> Would you like to play a song that is poison? <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I don't even know who the actor is playing DeVoe this season. It doesn't matter. It's not, he's not a very intimidating bad guy yet. No, not yet. It's Betsy will, DeVoe. He will be soon, right? As soon as like as soon as that chair hits hits eighty five, <laughs> you're gonna see some serious shit. Yeah. <laughs> uh, all right, let's get into some movie news. Logan uh, spinoff is happening. Starring the X-23. Mm-hmm. It's in the works from director James Mangold. I nice. can dig that. Yeah, I'm down. I'm down. Yeah, way to... That's the way to reboot Wolverine, right? Yeah. Just have, just have a movie based on X-23. Let that run for three movies. Mm-hmm. Give it a 10-year run. Then come out with the new Wolverine. I'm fine with that. Yeah, agree. Yeah. So, uh, Deathstroke is also getting a movie. And mm-hmm. there's been mixed reactions on the internet for this because it's just like uh, Deathstroke's a bad guy. He shouldn't like have his own feature. Like he should just be a bad guy in a Batman movie. There's been a lot of talk of that. And they're like, well, Deathstroke shouldn't be an anti-hero, like shit like that. But also then there's people for it kind of like, I mean, I'm all for it because I love Deathstroke and yeah. I think it'd be awesome. And of course, Batman's going to be in it in some fashion, right? Yeah. I mean, so. yeah, that was like one of his main like nemesis. Mm-hmm. So, uh, and he was a part of Suicide Squad for a bit, so you could always somehow tie it into Suicide Squad somehow, or at mm-hmm. least that he has. You know, that's how you can even start the movie is him running with Suicide Squad and then like getting exempt from all the crimes he's done, and then he's out doing his thing. I mean, Except you'd have to re- recast all of Suicide Squad because you don't want to mix your universes now. So why? Well, because well, because DC because Will Smith not... isn't playing Deathstroke oh, and no. and DC being DC. He, he what? played Deadshot, you what? dumb idiot. Death, dude. Yeah, like I said, Deathstroke. <laughs> oh my god. You're <laughs> such an idiot. I always I get those like, two confused for some reason. Deathstroke and Deadshot. Yeah. Yeah. My brain was like working. It was like, wait. Yeah, I, was wait. Like, <laughs> I was like, oh, did someone back out of a project? Like, I didn't realize I'm just, that. I'm just keeping you guys on your toes. That's all. Oh my god. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so I'm all for it. Uh, you know, last we heard about Deathstroke, Ben Affleck released a um, uh, a video of Deathstroke walking towards the camera, and um, that was that. It was supposed to be in the Batman movie, but now he's not because Deathstroke's getting his own movie. I don't know what DC's doing. They're doing some stuff. We'll see. They don't. Know I what guess doing. they don't know what they're doing. Mm-hmm. They don't. Um, and in the worst decision uh, in the world, Tom Hardy will be playing Venom through motion capture. Haven't we learned our lesson? <laughs> Haven't I, we with Ryan Reynolds with the Green Lantern? Um, or with uh, Topher no, Grace playing I, Venom? I, in yeah, Man. but you could all, all you could also ultimately flip that and say like, yeah, but that's what Mark Ruffalo does for the Hulk. 
I know. And you can also flip that and say like every like Iron Man, uh, yeah. Robert Downey Jr. Yeah. Now he's all mocap as well. Pretty much. Yeah, sometimes it's just easier to do that. I mean, and, and I think in his case where he's this weird, you know, symbiote like creature or whatever he's called, like mm-hmm. you have to in, in some regard. Like I wish they had done in um, uh, Spider-Man 3, like mm-hmm. uh, he would have worked well if they had stopped pulling his fucking mask back. Yeah, because when hit was his like venom face, it was creepy as shit. So I hope they keep that with the mocap because you have to do that. There's no way. There's no way with practical effects you could achieve that that look specifically. It would look too cheesy. It would look like the Ninja Turtles from like the old Ninja Turtles movie. We're like, it's hey, good, hey, but hey, that what? looks cheesy. <laughs> I'm okay with that. Let's bring it on. No, not for <laughs> look as like long it. as they get to go on tour afterwards and do like Pizza Hut promotions. I guess it would look like the Spawn suit. Yeah, but worse. <laughs> Uh, so we'll see how that turns out. Of course, they, I mean, they could really fuck up this, this whole, Sony could really fuck up this movie. It's got a great cast, but we'll see. Mm-hmm. Well, we'll see. Uh, so this is really exciting. And I hope now that he's bringing, you know how, you know how some actors bring up stuff in the media and sometimes it's just to tell a story, but then sometimes it turns into a movie. I hope this is one of those stories. Because Simon Pegg has come out and said that um, he pitched Edgar Wright a Shaun of the Dead sequel, but with vampires. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And the story goes is it's the same it's the same exact uh, intro um, as the uh, as the first movie, but instead instead of turning right on one of the streets, he turns left, and that's that's how they separate the story. <laughs> 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 And so it's all with uh, all with vampires. Uh, so he says it was all pub talk, but later on, I guess he's written a script. Uh-huh. It's been written as well. And I really hope this gets made because that's one movie I would I would absolutely love to see so a is, sequel. Is it like a true sequel and that it takes place afterwards? And so like Nick is I still think, a no, zombie. It's an, alternate, it's an alternate reality. So nothing, none of the events happened in in the zombie movie, it would just be the same movie, but instead of going right, he goes left. And then, uh, and then that's when it starts with yeah, the zombie. Oh. Just said, yeah. Okay. Uh, I like what they, what he was calling it too. He was jokingly calling it from dusk till Sean. Oh my God. <laughs> my God. It's I'd so good. <laughs> take my money already. Yeah. They could have done like a whole the slew of like Sean movies in that regard. Just, Oh, uh, that's fuck. Oh, God damn it. That's mm-hmm. so good. It's, and then toward the end of the article, they said, we'll have to file this one into the what could have been drawer. So it doesn't look like it's happening. But if it did, that would be fucking hilarious. That's what we said. It's like at the beginning, it's like sometimes projects like it can because nobody wants to fund it and stuff. But look at Deadpool, right? I mean, Deadpool was shelved for years until somebody leaked something and then it got made. So hopefully Simon Pegg's putting it out in the world to see if there's a reaction to it. And maybe a studio goes, you know what? Let's fucking do it. Hey, Let's, man, he put that baby driver money to good use. Yeah, I you're right. That was a good movie. Mm-hmm. Okay, uh, let's move on to some gaming news. Sony today unveiled some new games and some... Uh, they were like, oh, we've got seven new games to show off today. Yeah, that that was bullshit. Yeah, that seemed to be bullshit, right? Because <laughs> they showed off a lot of what they're already doing. Now, they yep. did show off some pretty cool games. Uh, and some and some DLC content and stuff like that. But overall, what'd you guys think? It was. I didn't the, watch any the, of it. The pre-show was longer than the fucking show. <laughs> and that was and like, the pre-show was mostly it, indie titles and PSVR titles. That's all I watched. I watched and about thirty PSVR, minutes. Of PS PSVR is pretty much dead. Wouldn't you agree, Kev? Fuck no. They did you see how many games they announced for it? There's a ton of games. No, there's a lot. And then yeah. also, so what two. was really yeah. cool, m- yeah. my. What? No, 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 no. I don't mean to interrupt you, but he you said say games, you. but don't you mean demos? How many demos did they show off? Hey, remember when you bought the Switch and you were hyped for that one game that came out for it? <laughs> yeah, but like the best Mario game just came out, so eat a bag of dicks, Kevin. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so now the Switch has been out for a year and they have literally two games. Motherfucker, you own a Switch! Yeah, I do. Yeah, I you, you, you asked these poor people who are listening to the show and watching our stream to give you money to buy. A, so shut your fucking mouth, Kev. 
<laughs> Actually, I know I I crowdfunded most of it, or I'm like I crowdfunded a little bit of it. And I paid for the and most then, of it. I and sold then you sold your your broke ass microphone to Windrus and tried to tell her that it worked. It works. Fuck <laughs> off with your bullshit. <laughs> Windrus knows it works. No, hey, hey I paid no, it doesn't. For part of that switch as well, sir. I paid what? for part of your switch, so I'm a co-owner. Your co-owner. <laughs> you own the left trigger. <laughs> um. No, PSVR was some good titles, but the one I was excited about was they announced Guacamelee 2. Yeah. And Guacamelee was awesome. If you haven't played the first Guacamelee, it's probably dirt cheap on Steam, especially probably on sale right now for the horror, uh, for the Halloween sale. But that was fantastic. And seeing it has four player co op in this one. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, it's pretty awesome. Uh, all right, let's move on to this. This is an interesting story. Because, wow, uh, Destiny 2 is now 2017's best-selling game just after one month on the market. <laughs> well, it seems a li- I'm, it's fine. It feels a little skewed. Why? I don't know. Best-selling, <laughs> best-selling <laughs> game. Okay, but it's a, like it's a, one of the games that's like available like, on, on everything. Well, yeah. Are uh, games? N- no. Most of them? No. Yeah. Yeah. What? Fucking. Okay. Tell me what other fucking system, fucking uh, Legend of Zelda is out on, or Zelda, Breath of the Wild. Hey, I'm okay. you. Tell me and <laughs> two, two. Hold on. Tell me what game you want to be number one. Oh no, it's fine. No PUBG. We just wait till fucking PUBG comes to Xbox. You motherfucker. <laughs> <I'm just kidding. laughs> Man, but it's never. Hurt. It'll never be on PlayStation though because it, uh, they'll never get it because Xbox is like, we will pay you all the money for the exclusive rights. Yeah. Oh, there's know, just there's just there's games out there that like d- break it down into like how many you know break how, break it down get, break it down okay. like a song like break it down yeah, yeah I need that breakdown right now to calm mm-hmm. these nerves I'm just saying I don't doubt that like it's definitely probably sold the most because it's a super popular game right now but at the same time when it's up on literally everything of course it's going to but is I it mean, the number one selling game? on pc is it the number one selling game on you know what well, doesn't matter it's, it's the number one selling game overall it's, it's, it's not on the switch sweetheart no i know i was kidding why are you so salty about it you own it i've played because he because he paid for it i, I didn't know he no he no he didn't, no, he didn't. <laughs> no, <I> didn't. <laughs> right. and he's played like five minutes he's like i'm done i'm done uh, while so- jeremy and i are living it up I am. I wasn't. I, 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 I wasn't. I wasn't. I wasn't impressed. It felt like a fucking remapped Halo game, like retextured Halo game. Even their what's fucking, the last Halo game you played? Even all of them. So suck my dick, Kev. Which one? Name at least seventeen Halo games. <laughs> there have been oh, awesome. seventeen Halo games. Okay, fifteen. Okay. Oh well, in that case. Okay. <laughs> well, one through fifteen, and the Halo War games included in there. No. Nope, uh, name the name the PS Vita Halo game. Yeah, <laughs> that never was. That's not the I, uh, even title. I've been pleasantly surprised. Unlike Doug, I did not expect to like this game as much as I did. Uh, I think because it tickles my MMO um, uh, fancy, hits. and uh, and also at the same time provides me. I don't know, like it. There's just something special about going into an event, a world event, and there's all these mm-hmm. people who gather together to fight off mm-hmm. this one big thing and then it then you pull it off and you win and you grab a whole bunch of stuff from the chest i mean it's just a lot of fun that grabbed me more than the story was all the aspects of of being like together as working with others working with others and uh we did some of the we did some of the strikes and those were a ton of fun as well and uh so i don't know man i've i've really enjoyed doing all the side missions i got a chest plate that's got fire animated fire on me (sighs) What else do I need in life? Yeah, that I love the heart fire or whatever what they call it, that chest piece. It's really cool. Now I I'm I can't I mean we've got one guy uh in the Discord who is an is a Destiny 2 like expert. He can tell you every single I can't get that deep into it and who knows how long this game holds me, but for right now it's got its teeth in me and I'm enjoying it. Just eat me up. <laughs> Whoa. Spit me out when you're done. Jer, 2017. DLC. DLC. <laughs> uh, Meh. As- Meh. 
<laughs> Go back to Roller Coaster Tycoon. Hey, man, I just needed a game just to play and chill. And holy shit, I haven't played that game in a month or a year. It was a lot of fun. I got to go back. It was nice yeah, I remember just... we're like, hey, let's let's start the Halloween podcast. Doug is now playing. <laughs> <laughs> well, because Jared, well, Jared was just taking a sweet ass fucking time showing up. So I was like, well, while I wait. <laughs> things to do. Yeah. We were doing family stuff. Yeah, your wife was setting the kitchen on fire, you mean? Yeah, that's true. But she made some bum ass uh, fucking food after that. Anyways, uh, we have uh, Visceral. Um, you know, they, they got shit canned yeah uh, some more about that last week we talked about it last week but what we didn't talk about was some information came out about the uh the video game they were creating in the star wars universe i guess it was a uh it featured some scoundrels who you had to pull off heist with and is uh and it was a terrible terrible mess i guess Mm -hmm. the game's not dead you know it's moved it's being moved on to another studio but who knows who knows what happens with this, right? Like, it's going right. to be a completely different game. Well, because there was reading something, uh, I don't remember if it was in this article or another one, where it was just kind of saying, like, well, oh, EA just doesn't really want to make an action-adventure game. And it's like, f- fuck you. Like, you, you've you seen the hype that people have for this sort of game. Like, that they want an action-adventure Star Wars game. You know, yeah, we're excited for Battlefront 2, but, like, that only gets you so far. And, mm-hmm. like, you haven't really done anything else. I mean, like, I guess you have the Old Republic still, and you just ported like Knights of the Old Republic to Xbox One. Whoopty fucking do, but like, give you know Knights of the Old Republic. The fact that that game is still so popular is because of it's so different and like it's, it's you know it's not like your other Star Wars games, and it tells a great story. So get back to that and tell us a fucking good story. People are pretty much only excited for Battlefront Two because a lot of people are excited to play the fucking single player game for a change because they want something mm-hmm. new. Yeah. Uh- you're not going to get it because I think last week we talked about how EA is moving to an open world uh, system where they can really, really bet on all that microtransaction business. That's yeah, stupid. It's so, so stupid. Yeah, and like I just you look why at we the got... games that work and like the fact that like, you know on the Uncharted series is so successful because of the type of game that it is. Like people want that sort of stuff. Yeah, people will go play games full of microtransactions because the I don't know, they're Mo and they just have money to throw at shit. <laughs> like yeah. he does. But like it's just not everyone wants that. And they shouldn't be forced to play because you don't want to make a, a game that doesn't do it. And it's stupid that they're the only studio or developer or whatever that has the rights to Star Wars games, if that's how they're gonna be. Especially since they make mobile games. Like fuck off. Mm-hmm. It's just like uh it's just like uh you know, EA of they steal the they steal the NFL license as well, and now they just turn out terrible story modes in that, right, Rex? Um, mm-hmm. But I, I don't know. This is this whole thing is this whole thing is is kind of sad because it seems like Sony is the only one putting out like actual single player adventures still, right? I mean, th- we just saw the Last of Us two trailer today, as well as uh, a couple other games that are coming. I guess there's still companies out there putting out single player. I can't, I can't, yeah. blame it. I right. can't, blame I mean, there's it. still people doing it, but <laughs> I should say triple a third party studios are not investing in it as much as they did before, because why make a game where you only make $60 and some change off of DLC when you can make a game that's living, it's a service and you continually make hundreds of millions because people want to gamble. But I, I guess my point is that you, you should be using that money from these gambling games to then make games that people want to fucking play. It's the re, it's like the same. It's the reason why we have thirty thousand Transformers movies. It's because the studios want money to make the movies that they actually want to make, and so they they put out these blockbuster shit show movies that suck because mm-hmm. they know they're going to draw in the millions and millions and millions and millions of dollars over what they spent making it, and that's what these game studios need to be doing the same thing. Like, yeah, I hey, wish- we're going to make a fuck ton of money off of all this DLC and all the, that stuff so we can make a good story-driven game like Uncharted or The Last of Us or anything fucking Naughty Dog touches. <laughs> like, mm-hmm. Give Naughty Dog a I- fucking Star Wars game already. I agree. Like, I, 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 I love single-player games. Thank God for studios that still make them. I mean, look at Wolfenstein 2. We still got, we still got that. Yeah. 
And um, I mean, we still got Assassin's Creed. Like that's a single player game, yeah. but it is filled with loot and and loot boxes. And so yeah, is yeah. But uh, again, that well, but the thing that Assassin's Creed did differently is that that's all stuff that you can still gather in game. There's not. I don't think there's anything that's an exclusive, and you can still get the money to buy those things by doing stuff in game. So there's like a way of still doing it without actually dropping real coinage, which is what's nice. You know, mm-hmm. you can pay to win instead of pay to play, essentially, which. But it's not required to, unlike Shadow of War. Um, yeah, I agree. I mean, I agree. I, well, so, it's so tough to like sit here and say what the future will hold. But I really hope that uh, I really hope that the single player content doesn't die out, and I hope that I hope we do get a single player story for Star Wars. A Knights of the Old Republic would be fantastic. This game would have been fantastic. It would like a lot of fun. Yeah, me too. Um, so. We just talked about loot boxes, and even Twitch is getting in on it. No, they've had uh, it for a little bit. Uh, did, did have you seen them? Are they on? Are they on channels? How does it work? Um, I'm not entirely sure. You have to like enable them and stuff. But like, yeah, mm-hmm. you they, you sell them for okay x amount, and you get like yeah, like right now they have the Halloween ones with like the Halloween emotes. Where you, you spend bits to get uh, <laughs> zombie emotes. So you get the viewers have the option of leveraging their bits for a chance to unlock zombie emotes. And so if they're enabled on your channel, uh, it's a hot, it's 250 bits in a single cheer, but roughly $2 and 50 cents for a Halloween crate where you can get six special emotes. You can collect all six. (laughs) I wonder how many emotes you get on that. Fuck. You only get one. Yeah. Spend twenty dollars to get emotes. Well, and the good news is, is apparently uh, bits are on sale. You can nab five hundred for only three dollars and fifty cents instead of five bucks. So you save like two fifty. So oh. what? Get your it zombie. Says, yeah, it's people. Takes, it said t- it takes ten dollars and fifty cents to get all those icons. Or, In or yeah, yeah. If you got every single one, or it could take five thousand. <laughs> yeah, I, I saw someone in one of the one of the chats the other day. It might have been over on Band's channel that had all seven of them. I was just like, okay, that's a thing. <laughs> uh, Microsoft has seized production of the Kinect because why not? Because who used the Kinect in the first place? <sighs> Seriously. What a, this is probably the worst inclusion of, of hardware into a system. No, I would. It one. wouldn't be the worst, but man, it. Like Fuck. it pissed me off when, especially when you had the voice activity going, and like that stupid uh, commercial with Jesse from Breaking Bad would be like Xbox turn on, and then my Xbox started turning on, hmm. and it wouldn't even go to my voice. But apparently Jesse from Breaking Bad it goes crazy for. It's just got the perfect like like tone. Hey Xbox bitch, turn on. Did <laughs> <Well, laughs> Yeah, it really every fucking time that commercial played, I had to mute it. You know, uh, my Xbox turns on whenever it fucking wants. <laughs> it's, uh, Is it special edition? It's really, Sentient? it's yeah, I think so. I will literally be sitting here streaming. Like, you guys just check out one of my streams one day. I'll be sitting here just playing, and I'll just be like, my Xbox just turned on and opened. <laughs> like, I'll just keep playing, doing what I'm doing. Because like, about, about 30 seconds later, I'll be like, and it just closed itself and turned off. Like, just for no fucking reason. This is what I, see, this is what I, uh, um, this is what I think. I, th- I think it's like a dog who wants your attention mm-hmm. and opens play up me. and puts out its tongue. Yeah. P- please, pl- please, come, please come back. Well, I was going to play, uh, you know, and that's funny because I was actually going to play um, some um, Red uh, Undead Nightmare for like Ape and Horror Fest. And then I just never got around to it because of all the other games that happened to come out in October this year. So that's probably what it was. P- please come back. <laughs> uh,. All right, and then our last announcement tonight before we go. Injustice 2 is finally coming to the PC. Oh, shit. Knocking Destiny off of its player most buys of 2017. What, what was that, Doug? <laughs> Words. <laughs> I had to think of how they worded it. It's going to be the most popular game of 2017. Just kidding. Not even close. No. But I did play the storyline on it, and I love the story in Injustice I gotta 2. Finish. I got to finish it. Yeah, I finished it because I had seven days to do it because I bought it used through GameStop and I didn't want to keep it. So I just played the story and I had a blast with it. Uh, the story is amazing. Highly recommend it. And it's better than anything in the DCU has been able to write. 
like in the in the movie universe. Stop it. We got Wonder Woman, okay? It's better than Wonder Woman. No, it's not. Yes. It's yeah, more to the point. Well, because it's more... Okay, I'll tell you this. Wonder Woman is a single story. Yes, it was amazing. But Injustice, including everyone in it, it was fantastic. Okay. Did you play the first Injustice? Did you finish that one? Uh, I'll take that as a no. No. That story was amazing, too, because they were doing the multiverse thing. Yeah, I get it. Like, it's a good comic book story. Store, I don't, mm. and that's what I'm talking about. But that comic book or that comic book story okay. was more entertaining than any fucking DC movie. Mm-hmm. I was pretty fucking entertained with Wonder Woman. Wonder Woman's good. Okay, I yeah, it's great. <laughs> but it's definitely okay, the best. How about this? It's definitely like the, that's definitely like the best. That's uh, the best DC of the DC current yeah. run of movies for sure. But um, mm. but Injustice had everything else beat. How does that sound? Okay, there you go. <laughs> all right, I, I would even oh. I would even say that like. Uh, the Batman games beat all of the Batman movies. All yeah. Of all of them. All of them. I agree. And the storylines on those were fantastic. All of them. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah, the Batman games, better than the Batman Nolanverse. I love the Nolanverse, but I believe that the Batman games are so much better. Better story, better Batman. Mm. Darker, too, weirdly enough. <coughs> That's just, just the Joker. way the Joker acts. <clears throat> yeah, it's got Mark Hamill. You can't fucking beat that. Get out of here, Heath yeah, Ledger. And Kevin Conroy and Kevin as Conroy. Batman. Yeah. It's and, t- and Nolan North as the Penguin. So I, I find it very difficult to compare a video game to a movie. Like I just I can't separate. I have to. They can't like share the same spectrum to me because they're really? just they're so different. Not. I mean, games like after playing Last of Us and we Uncharted have, and have, everything like that, you have, really you can't blur the lines. Because you have 20 hours of story you can tell versus an hour and a half to two hours to fit everything in. Like, to me, it's just a different medium, so it gets judged on its own. And like, I okay. can't compare. What, what about television shows then? Like, when you go through a season of, say, Stranger Things? It's a fantastic TV show that I would say is one of the best on TV. Okay. But, like, it just, like, I can't, comp- I wouldn't compare it to a movie because it's not a movie. Because you still have 10 hours of, 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 of a fucking TV show that you get to tell this horror, uh, this huge story. Yeah, but you're also getting that. But I will say that. Games. But I will say that it's that it's probably a lot better um, uh, storytelling than some of the movies that I've seen. Yes, like I can, you could say that. And I, I will. I, I guess you can compare story storytelling in a video game compared to a movie, like a script or something like that. Mm-hmm. I guess I can see that. I it's mean, just, if you think about it, when you cut out the cut, when you cut out the gameplay and just like, you know, like YouTube does this all the time with where it'll just go through, like, say, Last of Us, just the cut scenes. Yeah. It'll be like maybe a three hour movie then. But I think I, but the, yeah, but then the, the gameplay makes up so much of the game. Like, you can't dismiss that. Like, you can't be like, well, I tell you what, this new Batman, the gameplay really was shit. But that story, fucking 10, just a 10, beats out anything. Like, because you always compare the gameplay with the game and you wouldn't, I mean, that's just how you, that's how you, that's how you do it. Right. I don't know, man. Uh, I just think, let me ask you this. If injustice had shit controls, it wasn't good. And it was just a shit game. Would you still be sitting here going, man, that story was fucking amazing. The story. Yes. I would, I would grade the story on a separate on a separate plane than I would the controls and everything and the gameplay. See me, all that, all that goes together. But I mean, in, in most cases you usually do get a great gameplay and a great story of once again, coming straight out of naughty dog and even like Eidos lately with tomb Raider. I mean, you're getting a great story and great gameplay out of it. Yeah. And that's what, that's what makes something a great game. To follow me because right. I, yeah. I, I overall, but I'm, we're talking about like the way the, what this started, I thought was talking about the storylines. Yeah, but that's what I'm saying. That's why I cannot. That's why I can't compare it to a movie because of the fact that when I judge a video game, I don't judge it just on the story. I judge it on the gameplay because I can guarantee you, if if um, fucking Tomb Raider had a was sh- had shit gameplay, I would have never made it through it, no matter how good the fucking story was. I wouldn't have sat there and been like, yeah, I, I'm going to play through this game now because th- I heard the story is really good, but fuck, I keep dying every two seconds because the controls are shit. Right. Like if it was a shit game, you wouldn't, you wouldn't, nobody would fucking play it. 
And no one would be like, oh, this game is fucking, I got to put it up here because of the story. That's what I'm saying. Like, you, I can't, I can't, I, that's why I don't separate them a lot of the time and compare the two. Okay. I mean, I, that, I, that's, that's your opinion, I guess, you know, like it's just not saying I, that anyone's wrong, not saying no, that. No, 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 this is, yeah, this is, I'm just trying to think like, what if a movie had horrible acting, but it had a good story? Would you be able to sit through it? No, no. Okay. Like, like it's, so that's the, that's the comparison then. Yeah. Like I, I, if a, if a story is shit, but like it has, I, like you walk out of shit, like that's, that's terrible. Like, trans- like, like every Transformers movie that comes out. Yeah, like it's a it's shit story, <laughs> but it's got explosions. So yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, so yeah, I just uh, yeah, that's how that's how it works. Like I, I walked. When's the last movie you walked out of? Last movie I walked out of. Um, fuck, man, I can't think of it. It's been a while, uh, especially since I. Uh, last movie I wanted to walk out of was the last Resident Evil movie. Okay, but but so I didn't. I almost fell asleep in the theater, but I paid four bucks to see it. So the last movie I walked out of was the the first Tomb Raider movie with Angelina Jolie. I don't think I've walked out of a movie since. Oh God, I never even walked in the theater for that. We walked. We, we, we walked in. And we were like, oh, okay, yeah, Tomb Raider's sick. And they were like, this is really bad. So we walked across the way and saw Swordfish instead. Yeah. Which was an okay movie. It's not it has not aged well, but it still has Halle yeah, Berry's boobies. Because it's so. shitty hacking. Yeah. yeah but Halle Halle Berry's boobies. So uh, that was good. Man, I'm trying to think of another movie. Uh fucking The Crow 2. I remember like walking out of that theater pissed. Oh no, Alien versus Predator. Fuck. I hated that movie. And I got in for free and I wanted my money back. What? Uh, AVP was a lot of fun. And also, Rec- King says, Conjuring 1 and 2, get the fuck out of here. You're gone. I'm going to time. Can I time him out? Can I 10 seconds? <laughs> no, time no, out? no. Oh. no. I'll only do that to Ed. <laughs> Fine. Where's Ed? Uh, Where's Ed? Ed gets timed out. <laughs> Pixie, Pixie comes in and, and says about the, the elements of a good story. It's universal. Yeah, that's very true. I 100% agree. Yeah, you, yeah, you got Deb that... in here. And we have the writer trying to tell us how a story works. We know Deb. Get out of here. <laughs> we know how this story is our the... show. <laughs> the argument isn't the story itself. I I think that the argument is the way that uh that a, the way it's presented. Way it's presented. Like, do you rate on a whole? Like my in the way that I rate a game is on a whole. It's not based just on a story, and so, uh, that's the argument. So that's the and discussion um, versus like a movie, which is just you know a non interactive uh, space where you just watch it. I don't know, Doug. Do you? I mean, I guess you can't. I guess you do compare movies to video games. I yeah, don't, I don't really know. I mean, because like you said, it's so different. The time, like the time that you have to tell a story, and this is where I'll disagree with Deb. Like in that regard, is that like there are movies that try to tell a story and they try to do it in an hour and a half, and you're like, "Ooh, man, you should have split this up," or vice versa, where you have a movie like The Hobbit, where it's like, "Why did you just do this? In, why did you do this in three movies? You fucking idiots! And you waste, you like ruin the story because you try to cram too much in over too much time." But mm. like, um, yeah, like. I will say that yeah, I enjoy the the Batman games better because I feel like their story are better. But again, like you said, that's over a, a series of games that is hours long in comparison to a trilogy, which is only comes in at about like maybe six hours, maybe maybe a little over six hours. Whereas, I mean, I guess you could say, oh well, one of those games is six hours, but it's different. It's so different again because it's it's a game and they can fit more stuff in and you can experience more things because of how much time you have to do all these different. It's different. And you get deeper, you get deeper into the mythos of the character. Yeah. And, and even, you get to explore yeah, so much. Cause you know, like, I'm listening to it right now. Still, still mm-hmm. 44 hours hour left. 48. <laughs> yeah. Well, it gets 44 hours long. I have 12 hours left. So I have like a, like a quarter of the book left or so. I'm like, you know, it's, but it's such an immersive story and there's so much stuff that it's like, I'm surprised that they were able to make one move. I mean, you know, they, it's obviously going to be more than one movie, but they, they fit all the kid stuff in one movie because of how much stuff there is in the books. And the fact that they're making a sequel or the follow-up that's going to be the adult point of view, again, surprises me that it's going to be just one movie because it's so much stuff. And it's just, it's different. It's different. I would, I would, an it, like, Netflix series where you could have told me over three seasons with ten episodes each would have been dope as shit. But that would have been, that's just Stranger Things, so. Mm-hmm. 
All right. Well, that's our show. I hope if you guys have if you guys have an opinion on this, if you if you can compare, if you like it, let us know. Shoot us a line. Uh, hit us up on uh, social media, and of course in our Discord. Uh, start a conversation about it. So, um, you know what we should do on Discord? I think it'd be fun is to create a new channel called Show Feedback, and people can just talk about the latest episode. Kind of, kind of. So it's like a like a Talking Dead kind of deal. Yeah. Just talk about the episode, what they think, their thoughts, and everything like that. People can give feedback if they liked it or not. And uh, I don't know. Maybe that's maybe that's something we should do. Uh, if that's something we should do, let us know. And uh, I think it might be fun. So uh, that's it for this week. You know, um, stay Kevin Spacey, right, guys? Oh, no, no. No. Oh, no, oh, no, no, no. Sorry. Don't. Don't, be, don't be Kevin Spacey. Don't be Kevin Spacey. That's right. Never. If anything, never be Kevin Spacey. <laughs> never be Anthony Rapp. If you could be anybody, be Anthony Rapp. He's pretty awesome. Yeah. Uh, I'm Jeremy. I'm Doug. I'm Kevin. Until next week, love hugs and all that bullshit.